gentlemen, on behalf of Peter Maniatis, personality Pete, your promoter of the year, welcome to Melbourne. What a great atmosphere. What a great crowd out there. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, the Boxing Fit Cup in association with Cervic Instructions and the Hotel Seville of South Yarra with Don Caro, the place to stay when you're in Melbourne City, the sporting capital of the world. Four rounds of boxing as we start the Australia versus New Zealand match series. When the bell tolls, your man in charge of the action, Ignatius Misalaitis. Your judges at ringside, Peter Flaherty, Anika Williams, and Chris Anderson. Your timekeeper at the bell, World Championship timekeeper, Damien Membry. Your ringside physician, Dr. Peter Lewis. Howard Lee is my name. Boxing, kickboxing is my business. And business is good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, four rounds of boxing. Introducing first, on my left, occupying the blue corner. Born in Samoa, South Pacific. Now resident, Henderson, New Zealand. Last time in Melbourne, knocked out Danny Evans at Fort Knox. At 28 years of age, 70.30 kilograms. Last year, challenge for the New Zealand middleweight championship. 12 fights, 6 wins, 3 big wins coming by way of knockout. Would you welcome wearing white trunks with black trim, fearless, Filiata Melata. <laughs> and on my right, occupying the red corner with Andrew Woodall and Dave Hegarty, part of Team Destruction, Tarnit, Melbourne's western suburbs, wearing total black trunks like Iron Mike Tyson. Tonight at 72.10 kilograms. A very decorated amateur career, 20 fights, 16 wins. Two professional fights, aiming to win his first professional night bout tonight. Would you welcome the smasher, Jay Sims. Here we go. Four rounds of boxing. The instructions I have to my left here, Troy Santuck, commentating with me here tonight. Uh, it's a uh, atmosphere is electric here at Ringside Dream. Absolutely electric. It's like the uh, State Electric Commission, Stephen. <laughs> it is electric. It certainly is. No doubt about that. Massive crowd. Oh, yes, massive crowd here. And uh, Philo Maltea and uh, Jay Sims here in the ring. Jay Sims here for his first professional bout, uh, I understand. After 20 uh, fights as an amateur and 16 wins, has an enormous uh, record there. And Dave Heggett in his corner. Uh, recently saw him spar actually uh, uh, in the gymnasium and the boys are firing away here now as uh, Faladia got uh, pushed into the red corner uh, Sims uh, blocked him in there Troy yes uh, Sims with a 2kg uh, differential Stephen he's got the uh, 2kg advantage oh yeah that's not the weight differential there isn't there now when you look at the uh, uh, situation at this level of uh, what Junior Welder uh, you wouldn't want to that 2kg could be Oh, a big differential in terms yep. of body strength, uh, Troy. 26 years junior, of age. It's junior middleweight, actually. Junior middleweight uh, for the uh, those who are uh, uh, more expertise in working at these uh, permutations and combinations, Troy. And uh, uses the southpaw stance, Stephen. Jay he Sims does. And uh, uh, Faladia now uh, seems to be trying to exert a bit of authority there. Oh, nice. But, uh, Sims caught him with a right hand across yep. the head there, Troy. Yeah, punishing right hand, Stephen, to the temple. Oh, a push, a right hand push by Sims. Yep. Wasn't much in that. What's he doing this? Oh, point. Did he take a point off? Oh, no, was it no, just a warning? A that's warning, the warning from the there, Stephen. For push. Yeah. And uh, that's all I think that uh, deserved in those circumstances. Nice to be here, guys. Yes, yeah, good on you, Peter Maniatis here, our number one promoter in Victoria, promoter of the year. Good to see you, Peter. Good to be here, boys. I tell you what, Philly Mialata, his last fight, he fought uh, Shannon McKenna for the New Zealand middleweight title. He's a big punch. He's knocked out Danny Evans. But Jay Sims, I'd say, is the most unluck unluckiest fighter in Victoria. Yeah, he's just been in the ring, Peter, with uh, Chris Collard and Luke Maloney. Two good fighters yeah. have just lost. So he's been close and on the mark Very all the close, time. Yeah, and I tell you I what, he's, he's highly really schooled, yes. And he goes into round one. Yeah. I just heard Peter Maniotis giving some statistical background history on Dre Sims there, Troy. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, not a bad first round. Yeah, I'm just scoring, scoring that to Sims. Uh, 
just through the weight of punches that Sims threw. He seemed to, uh, the one who went on the attack there quite uh, aggressively, didn't he, uh, Troy? You'd yes, say? yeah, he took the fight up to uh, Malata. Yeah, he took the fight right up to him. No doubt about that. Both and, uh, boys in uh, peak physical condition, Stephen. They are. Uh, that push was interesting. I think uh, Sims was committed to a straight right, but found himself to be too close to Falladia. Actually lost balance yeah. and had to push with the right hand, which caused uh, Falladia uh, to uh, mail at her to fall. And uh, he got a warning from Ignatius Mussolini's for that, but uh, only from the point of view, I think, to say, be a bit more careful when you're coming in. But uh, no harm done through no a push and uh, no penalty. And, uh, oh, I've uh, got to get the chair out of the corner before they can start there, Troy. That's very important. And the towel's been left there. Ignatius had to hold him up when the boys were aggravated. They wanted to get back into it quickly. Sims was the first one to throw a left, uh, uh, brushing across the jaw of uh, Mailta, but uh, no results there. Again, Sims looking for an opportunity now, but uh, Falati is trying to go on the attack. Daniel America's in that corner giving uh, some expertise instructions. Nice left hand there by Jay Sims, Stephen. Yeah, did you like that from Sims? Yeah, nice left hand. Made great contact. Oh, and uh, oh, there. Jump. And a little bit of Rodeo work there, Troy. <laughs> yes, very much so, Stephen. <laughs> stick a move, Jay, stick a move. <laughs> The boys got tangled up and then one of them ended up uh, riding the other. But uh, that can happen. Anything can happen in a boxing ring if you lose balance or if you're getting ready to do something and it goes awry for you. It went awry then. Yes. As Sims came in with that right hand. Got uh, Valadia. Oh, Valadia put the arm around. And Ignatius Miscellaneous will tell uh, Mail to off for that for wrapping the arm around the head. No, he doesn't. Tremendous exchange of punches, Stephen. And the boys are fast, Sims. aren't they? Lightning. <laughs> That's a good way of describing it. And that as Sims comes over the top, Mailter going back here again, and I'm pretty sure America wants him to go on the attack. The America I referred to as Daniel America in the corner there, who's the assistant trainer of Mailter, Mailata, Feely. Mailata from Samoa, fearless Feely. As he throws out a lazy right hand, just caught Sims on the gloves. Nothing much there to talk about, Troy. No. And that... Uh, the boys... <laughs> patient. Sims waiting for an opportunity. Both boys have settled down a bit now. They've got the initial nerves out of the system, Troy. Yeah, they're getting into more of a rhythm, Stephen. Yeah. Very important. Uh, because uh, what we're faced with here are four two-minute rounds. And uh, how did you see that round, Troy? Well, a lot closer than the first round, Stephen. But again, I'd have to give it to Jay Sims. Yes, I think he did enough work to uh, persuade the judges to differentiate. Yes, that and exchange then? in the corner midway through the round, I think, would get Sims over the line in that particular round. Yes, yes, I, I think you've persuaded me to a certain degree because uh, it was uh, an exceptional uh, completion uh, there to the first two rounds of the uh, of the fight. And the judges and, uh, tend to favour the aggressor in they, that situation. They do, they certainly do. And one thing I think Daniel America was trying to get. Uh, a feely male Arthur to do was to go on the attack, but he's struggling to exert physical authority. That's the trouble. And Sims uh, is able to score if uh, Mailta gets himself into that vulnerable position. That's the thing. So uh, two rounds possibly here to Jay Sims. Unofficially here at ringside, uh, we are. But uh, how we see it at the moment, uh, Jay Sims, things seem to be working out fairly good for him at the moment as we go into the... Uh, into the third round of this 4-2 round bout to open the night at uh, Peter Artis Promotions uh, at the Malvern Town Hall here. And what a night this is going to be. 26 years of age, Jay Sims, uh, Stephen. Is he 26? 26 years of age. Yeah, so he's been well-schooled in the amateur ranks, coming into the professional rankings. And, uh, and again, uh, as he comes in hard, uh, Falladia pushed to Sims into the corner with a right hand, but uh, Sims got out, Troy. He did. Uh, Fang got himself a beautiful arrow spun again. Uh, Johnny Famish on style and turned uh, uh, Maley around on the uh, neutral corner ropes. And then uh, Mailta hangs on for dear life in a, a love hug. Spun uh, Troy. Right around absolutely magnificently on that occasion, Jay Sims. And he is there. Well schooled by Dave Hegarty, uh, Jay Sims, and uh, his trainer in that corner. And uh, now uh, he comes in hard, but uh, Mailder, they put the head down, and Ignatius didn't like that, Troy. 
tried to bury the scone into the uh, torso of Sims. Yes. It's called the turtle technique, Stephen. <laughs> is that uh, an official definition, is it? <laughs> it is now. <laughs> Sims again coming in underneath there, tried to come in underneath on the uh, stomach region of... Uh, uh, Mailta and Amala went over the top and now again whipping that left hand around in that yeah. hugging motion. That's a negative response, Troy, that uh, hugging motion. I call it spoiling tactics. Yeah, Speaking. John Ruiz, the heavyweight in America, is uh, proficient at it. As uh, Sims now looking for an opportunity and gets a royal... Oh! Well, he was committed to the punch, Troy. No doubt about that, and it was legal. He actually threw the punch before the bell went, but the bell went as the punch was travelling. So and as it landed, the bell had completed its ringing, and uh, five boys. Mailder was upset with that last punch, Sims, Peter, and thought uh, it was late. Sims the first three rounds, Peter. You're a typical lawyer, Stephen, trying to cause controversy <laughs> wherever you go. Well, he did uh, express his displeasure to Mr <laughs> Sims before Mr Sims returned to his corner. And by the way, Stephen came in through the fire hybrid tonight. <laughs> I was in at the back and he, he was like a fireman. How did you know that exit, Stephen? Well, I sort of had a bit of extra sensory perception that uh, I could see the front was uh, coagulated with the patrons and I decided that the best way of entering this premise is from the rear entry. Public liability issues, Stephen. If you want to get technical with your incident, yeah, I managed to make my way to ringside injury free. The fourth and final round, Stephen J. Peak. Yes, fourth and final round for this superb uh, first round action at the junior middleweight level of Jay Sims uh, coming out of that red corner in the black trunks. My, and uh, my clearly, needs a knockout, Stephen. Now, Malata in the one hand, you reckon he's gone, Troy? Do no, you? He needs a knockout. Yeah, oh, he needs it. Well, yeah. he certainly does. Nice present for Christmas coming up for him, wouldn't it? Oh! oh. And uh, again, the boys grapple. Yes, a uh, form of the dosey do on that occasion, <laughs> Stephen. An ungainly dosey do Yes, very, very much so. The holding pattern again, employed wouldn't, by Malata. Wouldn't win Dancing with the Stars with that move. Mail to drops the head oh, again nice and pops the left hand! Big body shots there by Sims. Oh! Dropped the head straight into that left end, but it, he's got a rock hard jaw, Mailer. That didn't affect him. Sims will be trying to finish him if he gets the chance here, Troy. The corner, the Mailer to corner are going ballistic here. Trying to get their man to work, to get out of uh, what he could be in a semi fog at the moment. And that Peter Manette is calling for Sims to circle his man. Oh, came back, I think, uh, an accidental elbow, was it, yes. to the back head of uh, an uh, accidental, Mailer. Accidental headlock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Again, uh, Sims coming in hard. Sims got a bit of blood on the side of the mouth. Uh, there, a cut it might be. Oh, he was nearly going to uh, drop one in from behind, but being a sportsman, Sims uh, held back from delivering that blow, Troy. Uh, I think Sims is on his way to his first win. It would appear at the moment. He seems to have all things going in his direction. boxing scene. Yes, very much so. He'd be happy with this performance, uh, Sims. Again, ducks his head at the right time, coming in low. Mail that comes down low, but ends up in a headlock. And that's the difference. And uh, Peter Mian is making his way to, uh, to ringside as uh, the judges now yeah, feverishly working out their results. Uh, there, Troy, but you'd have to say that... Uh, An entertaining fight, Stephen, but uh, a unanimous points decision, in my opinion, to Jay Sims. Yes, uh, he's certainly ahead on my card. He did all the right things uh, for a first-up uh, professional bout, and I was most impressed with him. Well, he set the pace and landed the punches. He certainly did. Uh, he's coming over now to talk to the uh, Philadelphia corner, male to corner. So and first up, an, an entertaining fight, I've got to say, Stephen. Yes, yeah, most entertaining. Uh, first up here tonight at the Malvern Town Hall, and uh, I think the patrons were well uh, served by that first bout to see a young up-and-coming uh, professional here uh, could uh, develop in this division uh, 
at uh, Super Welder, junior middleweight, however you like it. He's a well put together boy, isn't he, Jay Sims? Uh, he is. An ounce of fat on him. No, there is no superfluous weight, no body fat of any description whatsoever. In fact, uh, if they were carrying out the measuring apparatus, you would say the body fat would be 6%. The skin folds would be outstanding. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> for our two fighters before we go to the uh, official decision. Good fight. Stephen J. Peak said it was. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. All three judges have the same score totals. Chris Anderson, Anika Williams, Peter Flaherty, all had it 40, 36, your winner. His first big win in pro boxing, Red Corner, the smasher, J. Sim. Jay, don't go away. Thank you. Come across, Jay. How about three cheers for Jay Sims? The first big win in pro boxing. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. <laughs> Jay, you've got a tremendous crowd supporting you tonight. Congratulations. Boxed a very good opponent. Philly Edda was a very good opponent. Congratulations. Cheers, mate. Yeah, no, he was. <laughs> He uh, made me work a little bit, and it's been a while since I've had a fight, 12 yeah. months, broke my hand, and yeah. yeah, injuries, and that's how it goes. Who's got in the corner that helped you uh, get up tonight for a big win? Uh, I'd like to thank Dave, and big help to Woody, who spent a lot of time with me over the past few weeks, sparring, pad work and that. Um, I'd like to say big thanks to my girlfriend partner, Nicole, yep. who's uh, helped me out a great deal. Yep. And my sponsors, uh, Richie and the boys from UH Homes, who have supported me for the last two fights. Uh, yeah, big thank you, boys. Okay, Jay Sims. <laughs> Sammy Brizzy and Ben Brizzy Jr. working in overdrive, coordinating. Congratulations, guys. Okay, Peter Maniatis promotion, show 25, Malvern City Hall, Friday night fights for your enjoyment. Your judges are signed on the 10 point mass system this bout. Four rounds of international super middleweight boxing judges, Bryce Birdwhistle, Mizanika Williams, and Chris Anderson. When the bell tolls your man in charge of the action, recovering from a right cross from behind Mike Tyson, Ignatius Miscellatus. Four rounds of boxing, introducing first, on my left, occupying the blue corner. He's an Aussie Kiwi, born in Mount Isa, 
North Queensland, now resident Auckland, New Zealand, part of the New Zealand Regular Army, possessing a sparkling personality. Ten fights, one win. Ladies and gentlemen, fondly known as Pistol Paz or the Soldier Boy, wearing Sydney Swans colours of red and white. Would you welcome at 74.40 kilograms? They call him Paz. Paz Vijo. Paz Vijo representing New Zealand. And across the ring with Team Hargraves, Mick Hargraves, Kevin Hargraves in the corner in amateur boxing under Brizzy Brothers Promotions. He had 12 fights, 8 wins as a professional. A perfect hat trick. Three out of three with two inside the distance. At 76.30 kilograms, white trunks with black trim. Ladies and gentlemen, they call him the Prince of Port, Kerry Palmer. Here we go, bout number two. And Certainly uh, boxing on the horizons uh, here, who has dispatched three opponents uh, massively uh, since the commencement of his professional uh, career, Troy. And here he's up against here now against a man who has struggled somewhat, Paz Vejo, soldier boy, they call him. Paz Vejo, originally from New Zealand there, the lad. Uh, Nine bouts, eight losses and one win. It's the one win trying to add to that... Uh, uh, card here tonight, but he's up against a man who looks extremely fit. Troy done a lot of work. He's had bigger wraps put on him than King Toot and Carmen. <laughs> Harry, Carmen <laughs> let me tell you. Oh, they're massive wraps. Don't you worry about that. Kerry Palmer is moving very nicely Kerry at the moment. Kerry Palmer's put together, Stephen. Yes, yeah, so I'm looking at the uh, the massive uh, chest on the man. Uh, he is, and obviously does a lot of heavy work in the gymnasium room. He's got the Hargrave brothers who were recently, I think, just opened a new gymnasium, didn't they? Yes, they did. Uh, the Boxing Fit Gymnasium down at Hoppers Crossing, Stephen. Yeah, what a massive uh, day that was for those who were there. A uh, fantastic display Absolutely. of equipment. Feeling our process at the moment, Stephen. Yeah, Paz Vejo now is uh, uh, not able to get the centre of the ring area. Palmer is dominating that sort of uh, circular region of the ring, Peter. Stephen, how perfectly balanced is Kerry Palmer? He just looks like a complete fighter. The calmness in him and the steel lie about him is just really so focused. He, he's going places, he's kid. Yeah, he is, and there's no nerves about the lad. He is just so relaxed and, as you said, composed. Peter hit the nail on the head there, and he just bounced a right hand straight off Paz Vejo in a first uh, uh, decent exchange of the bout there, and uh, the first exchange was all Kerry Palmer. Oh, threw out that nice straight left, that jab. Uh, may have just glanced the nostrils of Vejo. Vejo. Vajor more bounce than a uh, Barocca tablet at the moment. Oh, yes. Bouncing around a bit, but then he zigged when he should have zagged because as he was coming up, he got one bounced on the scone uh, by Palmer. Oh, went down low again, uh, nice Vajor. Right hand there by Palmer. Night, yeah, nice Vajor nice acknowledged those punches and started to bounce around, but he better be careful here. Palmer's trying to get that right hand working into Vajor as he moves yeah, to his nice, left, I think. Nice left jab there by Palmer. He might just, it'll be like a tracer, that right hand, if he manages to find Vaja as he moves to the left. He might, uh, oh no, he used to went for the body yep. and changed tack there. That just shows you the man is thinking about what he's doing there, Gary Palmer. Went to the body with that left hand. Came down low. We know he's got a shorter man here and he bends the knees like they do in the skiing rinks, uh, Kerry, when he has to get down low to deliver a body shot, Troy. Yes, absolutely, Stephen. He's using the uh, anti-clockwise movement at the moment, Vajo. Yes. Palmer yeah. stalking him. Just uh, waiting for that opening. Yeah, they're going the Sydney way, you reckon. So uh, there goes uh, Palmer. How impressive does Palmer look? The way he just cuts off the ring, his composure, his neat. He's, he's a perfect fighter. Oh, yes. Exceptional first round too, Peter, no doubt about that. And uh, all of the uh, clever work was done by Kerry Palmer, and I emphasise the word clever uh, because there were some scintillating moves there, there, without a shadow of a doubt. He found the mark regularly, and every time there was some... Uh, 
punishment to be dished out if you could call it that Palmer was the one doing the damage. So, <laughs> all in all, as Peter was saying, the complete package at the moment, yes. Troy. In saying that, Stephen, I think uh, both boys just finding their feet in that uh, round, and I'd expect some more, more fireworks in round two. Yes, well, Vaisho will need to, um, he'll need to uh, he'll light need the to fuse. Throwing some punches. <laughs> yes. He needs to light the fuse to start fireworks first, Troy. That's the, uh, that's the issue that uh, his corner need to address at this point in time because if he, uh, he's, a, he's been somewhat pedestrian early yes. and he needs to certainly up the ante on Kerry Palmer, he has to work out some tactics here too, how to combat the height and the reach advantage and uh, he's probably got the same level of strength but uh, it's all compactualised. Yeah. Oh! He's got a lovely left jab, Kerry Palmer. Has he? Straight. And it's very hard. Uh, it is. And that's with that the power pack physique that backs it up when he throws it. Uh, Vejo now is moving uh, constantly, using up all of the ring, Vejo. And that, that can only take it out of you, Stephen. Well, it will. Um, if he runs out of petrol tickets, he might find himself in a little bit of trouble because Palmer will then attempt to... Uh, impaling yeah. uh, in the neutral corner if he gets him into one. Yes. <laughs> oh, Ooh. a clash of fists there, I think. Um, and maybe a Palmer left hand may found its way onto the ear hole of Vajo. Contrasting style, Stephen. Vajo very open in his stance. Palmer. Oh, Vajo too open, Troy. You hit that nail on the head. If he keeps dropping his gloves like that and bending down, Palmer will land a big right hand, Absolutely. a thumper that will come down and give the boy a, look, look at his hands at the moment, a dreadful headache. They're, not, they're nowhere near his chin. Uh, that's because he's getting tired, uh, Troy. I'd say you were right about the yeah, petrol tickets issue. But you must have a look at Palmer's hands up towards the chin. Tr tremendous yeah. defence. This is uh, turning into a, um, for Palmer at the moment, a training gallop. Has Vijay's basically in survival mode, isn't he? He is. All his experience just to survive. That's, uh, that's what it's all about for him at the moment, Peter. No doubt about that. Uh, he needs to... Uh, he's got to get away from these corners and try and get some authority working in the uh, centre of the ring. Centre, Troy. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, the strength factor. And, uh, oh, an inside punch, Ignatius says. It says keep the uh, punches coming with the knuckle of the glove and not the inside palm. Fighters touching gloves. Back into the action. Palmer again trying to uh, just keep exerting that authority. And Vasia again on the back pedal. He was, he's been in reverse for most of the evening so far, Troy. Well, he's trying to counter attack, but there's... I'm there's, trying no, to, there's no method to his madness at the moment. Trying to wonder whether or not he's got a first or a second gear. The lad. Look, he's got a tough job here. This bloke is an up-and-comer, the Prince of Port Adelaide, or not Port Adelaide, Port Melbourne, <laughs> Port Port Phillip, Port everything. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he's, uh, he's just marshalling the forces here. They tough in Port Melbourne, <laughs> <laughs> They do, they ever. And that, I hope they don't get upset with that Port Adelaide business. But Another round to uh, Palmer. Uh, look, that was a 10-8 round uh, in my book. A 10-8 round to uh, Palmer. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have gone that far, but, uh, yeah, definitely a, a commanding round by well, well, the Prince <laughs> of Port Villa. Well, I, I, I will, and it was. That's what uh, I'll be uh, confident in saying, that uh, he dominated that round, and uh, Vejo needs to... It's not good enough to backpedal, uh, use up all that energy uh, in a fruitless exercise. Uh, disappointing for the man and for the crowd, but he's got his job cut out. We know he's got his job cut out here. Now, Daniel America, he's trying to uh, explain to him he needs to uh, exert a bit here, he needs to go on the attack a bit more, try and pressure Palmer. I just like the look of Palmer. I like his patience. He's not lulled into a false sense of security, Stephen. No, no. That's, that's a sign of a very good boxer. Man, a man who is not overawed by the situation but is very careful and knows that in boxing anything can happen at any point in time. Murphy's law applies. Yes. Absolutely.
A nice, nice right to the chin there by Palmer. Uh, uh, found the territory too with it. Vajo again as um, as Peter Maniata said a moment ago in survival mode here. Trying to stay away from Palmer's lethal jabs and crushing hard. right hand. It must be hard for Palmer, Stephen, because each time he tries to set himself to get some punches off, Pass has got that awkward style and he's always moving backwards. You can't set your feet. No, you can't. You can't set yourself because the other man has, I think, virtually decided, Peter, that he, it would appear that he can't win the fight. Uh, yeah, that's the worry. Absolutely, Pete, you're spot on. It's an awkward style and Kerry can't get into a rhythm. No, you can't. And Paz, look, he's a, he's a shifty old bugger in the old terminology. He knows he can't win the fight, so he doesn't want to get hurt. He's on his bike and he's doing a typical journeyman performance. But Kerry's going to learn from a fight like this. And he's going to get the rounds and he's going to learn how to combat awkward opponents like Paz. Yeah, and uh, VJ then for the first time for some time, once he got in close, he was able to tie up Palmer and throw some leather. He but did, yeah. Uh, it was only when he got in underneath the range he, that he was able to do that damage, he Troy. Needs, he needs... He needs to get in the breadbasket territory, Vajo, but... Uh, he does, and needs to hit hard. If he gets in close, he's not going to throw too many punches this fight, no. Vago, and when he does, they're going to have to be hard ones to have an effect on the man. Glancing blow to the head by Palmer. Another scoring punch, says course there, Troy, and Vago again running away from Palmer there. He's, a, he's actually shadow boxing at the moment, Vajo. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, and uh, Palmer trying to nail Vago. Oh, uh, I tipped it a while ago that if uh, that uh, Palmer would probably go in the other way, would try and catch him with a swinging right. But that time it was a left hook as Vago was moving to his right. Just a glancing blow, but Stephen actually tipped the reverse of what happened. The, the Vago corner happy with the Tom Bowler right hand there, but did nothing to stop Palmer moving forward. Well, frustrating for Palmer. There does get another nice right hand in. And Vago trying to work downstairs as they're in a tangle. Ignatius looking at them. Got the heads together there too. They'll need to be careful. Oh. And uh, the end of the third round, Troy. Clearly, clearly another round to Kerry Palmer. Oh, yes. I liken this, Stephen, to a sparring session at the moment. <laughs> Disappointing for uh, Vago there uh, that... Uh, he wasn't able to exert any authority whatsoever, and only when he got in close once was he able to deliver some leather, Troy. That's the worry, that he knows that he's just not going to get in there enough times to do any damage. No, he really hasn't mixed it up at all, Stephen. And Palmer, it's, it's really no more than a, a sparring session, I think, for Kerry Palmer at the moment, Steve. It's, uh, that's about where it's at. Final round. And, um, you know, Vago was... Uh, not going to improve on his world rankings here tonight either. In fact, he'd probably drop back a bit more. 34 years of age. <laughs> Palmer, the young gun, 23 years of age. Got the world at his feet uh, at uh, middleweight level here this lad. If he can uh, keep this sort of form up over a period of time. Big oh. things expected from Kerry Palmer by his manager, Peter Maniatis. Yeah, well, uh, Peter will be uh, trying to organise something for Palmer coming up that will be uh, suitable to his skills. But I think this fight will do in the world a good, Stephen. Awkward fighters. You do come across them on the odd occasion. Yep. And this, this you know, this has been a test as no. far as that goes. And a big right hand there by Kerry Palmer. Managed to put Vago back on his heels in the neutral corner of the far side of the ring. Ignatius was ladies. He split him up again, though. Palmer's looking for that right hand, that left to hook then. Looking for that opportunity of catching Vago as he moves either left or right, Troy. Make no mistake, he is in survival mode at the moment, Paz Vago. Oh, is he ever. 
And uh, Palmer now looking lethal with an opportunity now to uh, do a bit of damage here if he can catch this man when he moves, left or right. He's ever so surely managing to work out the moves. I've got to, I've got to say, he's uh, throughout this bout, he's been more evasive than uh, Ronnie Biggs. <laughs> yes. He's a slippery customer for such a stocky fellow. He moves very slippery very quickly for a man of his size and uh, stature. Big Palmer left, caught him. Right there by Palmer. May have uh, slowed him up a little bit, and Ignatius is having another word, I think, to hanging on to uh, Vago. Some Tabasco behind those punches from Kerry Palmer, oh, Stephen. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes, that uh, hot stuff, as they would say. And a nice little jab on the nostrils just to let him know he's around. No doubt the Vago corner are just hoping he can stay on his feet for the oh, end of the fight. Right but a nice right hand by Vago. Vago. And again by Vago. Got a couple of nice punches in there at this time of the fight. Quite surprising, really. Four by three minute round. So we're in our last round here. He might have given Kerry Palmer a reminder call with those two uh, right hands, yeah, Stephen. Don't get too cocky about it, but Palmer doesn't strike me as that sort of bloke. He's a man who is fighting a very, focused. to a certain degree, cons he focused and focused. conservative fight, uh, Troy, given the circumstances put before him. Because he could have lashed out uh, and dropped style uh, and substance for um, uh, an exotic display. For, for showmanship. <laughs> yes. And there's the bell. Well, Stephen, really no need to go to the scorecards. Clearly, Kerry Palmer, his fourth win of his professional boxing career. Yes, there was nothing... Uh, we could really add to that. Well, here comes Selena again with a cup. And uh, doing a great job there. And uh, we'll wait for the uh, official decision, but we can't really add anything to what we've said during the fight. Uh, Kerry Palmer was just a cut above uh, uh, Paz Vejo there. Uh, his ratings worldwide now will improve, Palmer. And Howard Lee is now coming into the ring to get the official decision. What a tremendous pair of shoes Howard has on tonight. Shades of the penguin from Batman. <laughs> The best in the business, Stephen J. Peake, one Howard Lee. He's the one and only uh, kickboxing ring announcer and aficionado in the country. And we'll throw in boxing as well, Stephen. Yes. <laughs> and there's a gentleman over there uh, who's uh, sitting next to Mel Sharp, yep. who's uh, thinking about putting some jelly. After this fight, John. Okay. Thank you, Damien. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the uh, final decision, we have a unanimous decision. How about a big round of applause for a very a great personality from New Zealand via Australia, Paz Vijo, fought very gallantly tonight. He's always smiling, that young man. Once again, we have a unanimous decision. All three judges, Chris Anderson, Bryce Burt, Whistleland, and Nika Williams, have it the same scorecard. 40-36, taking his professional record to four out of four. Ain't bad. Kerry Palmer. <laughs>
Hargraves, Team Manny Ellis, Team Palmer. Kerry, come across. Kerry, congratulations. Uh, he was an awkward man, wasn't he? He was always on the move, on the back foot, a hard man to catch up with. But congratulations, four out of four. Can't do any better than that. Yeah, he's, uh, he was pretty awkward. We, the, in the fights we've seen of him, he just comes, you know, comes comes out gunning away, you know, he comes forward and we didn't prepare for that, you know, he, he was on the retreat and uh, he kept ducking, you know, it was awkward. Yeah. Kerry, congratulations, a great crowd in and uh, lots of supporters here tonight. Yeah, the, the, the boys and girls always come out to see me, you know, my friends, my family, as always, you know what I mean, I want to I thank them all, you know, thank, uh, also I want to thank uh, a friend of mine who, who uh, helped me get my hand fixed and, you uh, uh, he helped me turn professional over the, the last two years, Ray Giles. He got me career up and running. I just wanted to thank him because I always forget. Thanks, Ray, and uh, yeah, thanks to my uh, my dad and my uncle for training me for this one, and all the boys and girls are coming out to uh, to, to see me. Yeah, thanks. Well done, Kerry Palmer, the pride of Port Melbourne. John Rambottis, former champion, VAFA Premiership player. John, all the items we've got up here. Again, show the merchandise. Put on show for you now items that we're going to auction a little later after. Before we get underway with this feature attraction on Peter Maniaz's big show, Bryce, tell us the rules under this contest, please. Uh, just the standard boxing rules. Uh, three knockdown effect is in, in uh, force. Um, and uh, three minute rounds. And that's about it. Good on you, Bryce. Okay, three in charge of the action. Bryce Birdwishel. Judges, Peter Flaherty. Adika Williams and Ignatius Miscellatus. Six rounds of international cruiserweight boxing. Introducing on my left, occupying the blue corner with Clay Omataki, his mentor from Auckland, New Zealand. In 1991, he won gold in Hong Kong in professional boxing. Three bouts, two wins. Both those wins by knockout. At 83.70 kilograms, black and white trunks, would you welcome the surprise packet from New Zealand, David Hallett. Hallett. And across the ring, Peter Marnianis, he called for it, and you've got it. Wearing trunks of gold and black, the most eagerly awaited professional taboo in Melbourne town this year. From St Albans via Derrimut, with John Sheeter, Team Sheeter, and Carl Grizzly in the corner. In amateur boxing, 17 fights, 17 wins. In kickboxing, 12 fights. 12 wins, a perfect record. 11 wins coming by way of knockout. At 85.70 kilograms, making his professional debut on the big stage tonight. They call him the Terminator. Jason Tramsek. Damien Membry, your timekeeper at the bell, your ringside physician, Dr. Peter Peter Lewis. Chairman of the board, boxing the boot and former all. welterweight champion of Melbourne University, Bernard W. Barmer. Certainly are, Troy, no doubt about that, because this boy <laughs> got a lot of confidence and uh, he's put... He's put the score on the board in kickboxing parlance 12 times. And Hallett comes in from New Zealand straight away. Uh, a veteran of 37 years of age dropped some leather into the stomach of Tramsek. Oh, Tramsek! Who decides not to muck around Tramsek and goes straight in on Hallett. Hallett, oh, he's hurt his shoulder, Hallett. Uh, I think he's dislocated his right so collarbone here. You could be right, Steve. Uh, this could be trouble here. This could be the end of this already here because he appears to have a dislocation. The doctor's going to come into the ring. Peter Lewis comes over to David Heller. He looks at the right collarbone and shoulder. He tries to pop the bone back in. You can see the bone oh. sticking out of the shoulder. He's in big trouble. Helen. I can't see this fight going on myself. Then again, I'm not a medical expert. 
He's lifting the bone up there, so you can see the nerves are jangling there at the moment. Troy in the uh, upper shoulder region around that uh, upper muscle. Now, just near the collarbone, the lad is uh, in excruciating pain. He dislocated it when he dipped it into the ropes. He may have got it tangled in the ropes. Yeah. You can see the nerves shaking, yes, Troy. Yes, you can. Uh, there's nervous twitches happening there at the moment, Peter, in the arm. I think he may have hurt the collarbone. He may have dislocated it. Peter Maniatis is walking around uh, to that corner, the promoter, to have a look at Hallett. They've called the fighter to a temporary halt here in the first round, Troy, at the moment. Doesn't look good for Hallett. Oh, look, this is a crying shame, Stephen Jay. It's uh, so much was expected out of uh, Tramsek in this fight, and uh, yeah. it'll be a hollow victory. It would be hollow because we were, in fact, I don't know how they would look at this. This would probably be redeemed to be a technical draw at this point in time, Troy. Well, it's, the fight must have gone 10 to 15 seconds. It's uh, well, quite was, extraordinary. Uh, extraordinary. I've never seen uh, anything like it. Uh, we had one exchange of punches where Tramsek did most of the punching and Hellett moved to, to that uh, corner, a blue corner area, the ropes there, and uh, when he bent very low and got tangled that shoulder slightly in those ropes, and that's where he could he have motioned, been He motioned to his trainer immediately. He, he knew he was in big oh, trouble. Yeah, and there was a bone. He could actually see it, and uh, Nick uh, Matthew was in there helping as well. There's a man who knows his stuff when it comes to kickboxing injuries and boxing injuries. And uh, Transec at the moment, what's happening over here? Uh, There's a wave of the arms by... Uh, I think it's over. By Bryce and uh, Bert Whistle, there's a wave of the arms, and yeah, it appears to be Bryce all Whistle. over. So the referees called him into it. I'd say, without further conference with the doctor. Disappointing too for Jason Tramsek because he was really looking forward to making a big statement in yeah. this. His debut. Well, he wanted to because he wanted to see where he was at in the boxing uh, territory, Troy. Yeah. Now he's frustrated because he didn't get an opportunity to do anything apart from one exchange. So uh, he's probably trained hard for this. He uh, has. He was. He leaves no stone unturned, Jason Tramsek. He... Not with the people who train him. Michael Kubernick is over there as well at the moment. The uh, consumer boxing promoter. Consumer professional, the way he handles himself, Jason Tramsek. Yeah, yeah. Yep, no doubt about that. And and just uh, to David Hallett. Uh, David Hallett is uh, very unfortunate. He's still in all sorts of yeah. strife here, and he might be sent to hospital, possibly for um, examination of that shoulder. They're, they're going to cut the gloves off him here. Uh, Peter Lewis is trying to still push that bone back into its socket. Have that arm. An extraordinary injury. I've seen it happen before in boxing. Yeah, but not in the first 15 seconds. No, I've not been, in the first 15 seconds. About quickly. round five or six of a fight yeah. uh, at Collingwood Town Hall a few years ago, several years ago. Yeah, yeah absolutely spot on, Stephen. Yeah. Shoulder dislocation. Shoulder dislocation. We'll have the official time in just a little bit. We'll talk to Jason and John Shuler. He's in a lot of pain, that lad. Let's give David Hallam a big round of applause here. An unfortunate injury. In the first 20 seconds of the fight. That bone is still uh, protruding uh, from uh, the socket as he is let out of the uh, town hall. Uh, raise the arm, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, after... No decision. Okay. No decision. No decision. I tipped that yeah. too. Uh, no decision. Uh, it had to be. Come on down, Don, for the presentation. Thank you. Yep, just one. Uh, Hotel Seville, unfortunate circumstances, and no decision contest there. Yep, Hotel Seville, I did mention that. The World Boxing Foundation Asia Pacific Gold Award. Thank you, Don. That's for your great work with boxing. Ah, thank you very much. But um, the main thing is, if it isn't for the crowd and the supporters, there wouldn't be a boxing and there wouldn't be anywhere to go ahead with it. OK, you'll give Jason Tramsek a trophy and a medallion. Unfortunate circumstances, but there we go. Pete, unfortunate there. What can you do? I mean, things happen in sport. 
I feel for Dave Hallett. We saw a little bit of Jason. We want to see a lot more. He looked explosive. So I feel for his fans, but I guarantee he'll be back bigger and better than ever. And it's his exciting prospect. What we did see was lightning speed and a lot of power. We did. OK, Jason, well, you can't help these things. Uh, you didn't even have a chance, really. 20 seconds. It wasn't much, was it? No, it wasn't much at all. A bit disappointed, but look, it wasn't his fault it happened. But um, hopefully it gets better. Come back again. Try to go a bit longer this time. What happened there? Did you tangle arms or something? I didn't tangle arms. All of, I, I don't even know what it was. I can't even say what it was. Jason, lots of people here supporting you tonight. You'd like to thank them for coming along. Um, I'd like to thank all my mates, sponsors, family. Happy birthday, Mum, for yesterday. Joe. Um, I'd like to thank Shine Hand Car Wash, Superior Wenda Decor, Gun Capital, Black and Blue, New Design. Thanks for that. And just thanks, everyone. Thanks, little fans, for coming. Love you all. Well spoken. Johnny Sheeter, John come across. Great to have Don Carrow on board, but those things happen. Yeah, very disappointing for Jason's debut in boxing. You know, we've got a big contingency of Western Suburbs. People come out here to see him tonight. Normally they're following the kickboxing. I'd like to thank all you guys for supporting us. I might feel like I've been to a wedding but haven't been to the party, you know what I mean? It's all over real quick. <laughs> but um, hopefully you all support him next year and we promise we'll do big and better things next year. John Sheeter, Jason Tramsek and Carl Grizzly Tramsek. Short and sour, not sweet. Okay, John Rombonis and the team come up. John, give John a... <laughs> Representing New Zealand. Tiriki Titanic Zuturu, the big ship. Stephen JP, you mustn't call him the big. Ha 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 ha. Okay, this is something special. Peter Maniatis brings to you tonight. On a Friday night in your city. Are you ready to box? Are you ready to kickbox? We've talked that talk, but can you walk that walk? Sheer will, sheer skill. And now it's time to face the music. You've seen the rest. Now let's get ready for the Iron Lion Fest. Young Victor, Victor Aquilina here. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask referee Bryce Bert Whistle to give us the rules that apply in this three-round K1 international contest. Bryce, this time we're spot on. Tell us what we're fighting under. Okay, we're fighting K1 rules, uh, very similar to Muay Thai fighting, except we don't allow the grappling to go on. You can't sort of just grapple without knee. So the grappling's limited it to about uh, five seconds. Uh, spinning back fists are allowed, knees are allowed to the body and head, inside thigh kicks, outside thigh kicks, and that's about the extent. Three knockdown rule in any one round will terminate the fight. Beautifully done, Bryce Bent Whistle, our referee in charge of the action. Judges at ringside, Peter Flaherty, Chris Anderson, Ignatius, Miscellatus, your timekeeper at the bell, Damien Membry, ringside physician, Dr. Peter Lewis. Ladies and gentlemen, Three rounds by three minute duration. K1 rules explained by referee Bryce Bedwistle. Stepping into the blue corner, in for the injured Maverick Harvey. 
This man has fought the biggest names in kickboxing and boxing, including Doug Viney, Andrew Peck, Ron Seffo, and jolting James Grimmer. He tipped the scales tonight at a massive 145 kilograms, 145 kgs, with a kickboxing record of 11 wins, five losses, nine of his wins coming inside the distance. With Brendan Jones in the corner, would you welcome all the way from Auckland, New Zealand, Teriki Titanic to Taru, to Taru. And across the ring in the red corner, with promoter Peter Maniatis bringing this man to centre ring for only his second time in Australian history. Recently in Japan, in the K1, he beat the legendary Japanese fighter Kakuda in front of 50,000 spectators at the famous Osaka Dome. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight tipping the scales at 98 kilograms, training out of the Definition Fitness Centre in East Doncaster with Jim and Nick Tatoris, with Stan the Man, his mentor. Seven bouts, seven wins, four by knockout. Collingwood colours, black and white, from Blackburn, Victoria. Would you welcome the Iron Lion, George Longanides. Here we go, referee Brian Spedwizzle. Semi-main event time, proudly brought to you by Boxing Fit, with a magnificent trophy to be presented by Mick Hargraves. Yes, the in the vicinity uh, of 50 kgs, if you can believe it. I know that about that, that's right. George Longanides is wearing the maxi trunks there, the maxi kickboxing trunks. Yes. More of an athletic style with a split down the side the, the uh, with white trim. George Longanides is amazing. He's got Must pedigree be. like you would not believe. He was in the... In the oh, yard at a yearling, so you'd pay five million for him, wouldn't you? Yep. Yeah. He's uh, in K1 ranks. Don't all the way uh, there, going all the way in Australian terminology at the moment, fighting in Japan. He's the number one man in uh, Don't heavyweight. Don't Terry uh, Tatero. Or, or even uh, it's a cruiserweight or super cruiserweight division. K1 boxing, kickboxing. He's the man at the moment. George Longanini's the younger brother the of Stan Lion. Yeah, Iron Lion, uh, no doubt about that. Uh, and uh, Terry Tudu, this is out of right hand, and struck uh, George in the esophagus, Troy. Tudu, the equivalent of knocking down an oak tree, this man, a Goliath. Yeah, Terry Tudu, I think, has fought Grimmer before, yes, he Peter. Has. Yep. And yes, he, uh, has. he uh, went the distance, I think, if I remember rightly. Mm, he did too. He is uh, a powerful man, and he's had a draw with Muhammad Azawi in boxing. And that and is resilient, the uh, boy from New Zealand, very New resilient. Zealand. He, he doesn't look good, but I tell you what, he's, he's got lethal hands. Yep, he's, uh, I think he suffered from breathing difficulties last time. Here comes George now, weighing into the big man with a knee. Uh, had the knee working, and uh, Bryce Burt whistle splits them. A lot of power in this bout. Gee whiz, there's just under 300 kilos in there. There's a lot of horsepower. Oh, gee, that big uh, left uh, leg uh, roped around the ear hole of Tatera Tutu. And uh, Batutu got the left leg oh. up. And uh, had to balance himself on the uh, ropes like a ballerina from the Australian Ballet Society. Yeah, so probably wouldn't go that far, Stephen, but... Uh... <laughs> He's here for business, Tuturu, which is which is good for the uh, the punters. Well, yeah, he's no. They After might, the, uh, uh, the Maverick pull, pulling out of uh, this bout with George the Iron Lion Longinides. If Terra Tutu can control his breathing, he'll be in this for a long way, I'd say. It's uh, Tuturu, and look at the size of those legs, Stephen. The yeah, massive tree trunk legs. The power that they must generate. Well. Wow. You could light up Times Square in New York. Oh, but George's gone and then he's there. The Iron Lion unleashes. The Iron Lion got that left knee up, and the knee uh, landed in the, uh, oh, up around the solar plexus of, uh, of uh, Terra Tutu. The Iron Lion, a rippling wrecking ball. He's <laughs> a fighting machine, isn't he? Yeah, 100 yeah. kilo sparkling fighting machine when he gets going. He glistens. 
Yeah, he's got that physique. He's got the explosive power like his brother, hasn't he? Very explosive and uh, a lot of body strength there. He's uh, in the torso, the upper the legs, body strength the upper is leg amazing. Is what about strong. the speed? The quadriceps. You can imagine the weights this man would lift in the gymnasium room. Uh, you know, you'd, you'd crack yourself open trying to match it. Tuturu not taking a backward step, Stephen. No, oh, never does this man from New Zealand and hanging onto the leg. And uh, Bryce Bootwhistle will say, let go of it, son. And the end of the first round of this massive three by three minute bout. Uh, George Longanini's uh, having a bit of trouble with the trunks. But uh, look, but it's uh, pretty impressive. close first round. You'd probably say Longanini's just, but not a great deal in it, gentlemen. Not at all. Extremely impressive, George Longanini's fellas. Very much so. He's had all of the major positive moves, but. Terra Tutu has come back with a clever stuff as well. The clever leg work off the ropes, no doubt about that. Uh, he will be in this for a long way, Terra Tutu. It will all come down to his breathing, because that's the breathing that's had him in trouble in the past, I'd say. But a man of his size, all he has to do is get lucky once, and it, and it could be all over. That's the, that's the big issue, isn't it? When so, you're that big. Longanides, though, looks like he can handle a lot of punishment, though. Yep. He's got the physique, he can take it. He's primed, make no He's mistake primed, about no. it. It's been a long time since I've seen a man come into the ring that strong, maybe Greco. Mm. Oh, some strong leg kicking there from the oh. lads. Man, they're not backing away from it either. No. You get one in the wrong spot there. That's nothing more than a slip. <coughs> nothing more than a slip when George became a little bit over anxious and tried to drop a Tom Bowler on the lead from New Zealand. You have to give a lot of credit to Tuturu here, Stephen. Uh, called in at the 11th hour. And he's acquitting himself quite well at the moment. Right on, oh, he got one on the yeah. groinal region there, George. And, uh, Seems very effective with his legs, Tuturu. Yeah, needing to just to readjust there, George, at the moment. But uh, yeah, it's uh, got to be worried sometimes when people take fights 11 there because the 12 there, you can end up on the deck. And there goes George slapping away at that uh, rib superfluous uh, body weight there of Terra Tudu there. Not having any effect on that uh, part of the physique at all on Terra Tudu. He's really got to go for the head. To, ma to make any impact. Well, look, you haven't got enough time. Only three three-minute rounds to try and work away at that physique, and it would, it's going to take you ten rounds to make your way through it. And so you've got to forget about some regions of the body. The legs are possibly a weak spot. I know they look strong, but uh, you get the man in the wrong spot on a tibia or a fibula, and George there trying to motorise his way in there and get the knee up and into the, gro not the groin, but into the even the kidney region at the back or the side of the rib cage of the big man and try and drive that kneecap in. That's what they'd be trying to think about doing here because you just can't hurt this guy. He's very hard to hurt. George again getting into that big hug motion, Troy. Yes. yes can oh, you can see that flesh and um, bone and gris gristle uh, slapping away at each other. Big left hand there by the Iron Lion. He wouldn't have liked that, Terra 2. Wouldn't have liked that at all. Tutoroo. Tutoroo, sorry, Terry Tutoroo. <laughs> he wouldn't have liked that. He would have found that most unpalatable, that punch. It slowed him up a little bit. It just knocked the wind out of his sails, the big man. And again, Longanides with his skill with that right hand, managed to work that in, and he's trying to slap him or absolutely pole him with that right hand, but didn't quite land. And Longanides with a smiley face said, Terry, you missed, son. Oh. And then Terry pushes Longanides into the, straight into the canvas there. The uh, Tateru corner yelling instructions. Oh. Interesting second round. Probably Longanides, but not much in there. Not much in that round at all. Unusual fight, this. It is a contrasting style, Stephen. Technically, the Iron Lion 
doing everything Brendan. absolutely Brendan. spot on. Tudor Roo becoming very awkward, but very dangerous with the weight differential. Yeah, that, uh, this is Brendan. a trouble, Troy, is it? With only one round to go, you haven't enough time to work into the flesh of the big, uh, the big man from New Zealand. Uh, you've really got to look at the legs and you've got to look at uh, putting the knee into a part of the body that you know you can do some damage which, with. Which was uh, Stan the Man's signature move. It was. He used to love to attack, come in, grapple, run the arms around. Get the knees working, Troy, into the uh, solar plexus, the rim cage. Someone who did a bit of damage with Greco, of course, was very proficient. Absolutely. The, the spinning back uh, kick or the uh, the kick around the head region, the ears, uh, Greco could get the legs right up. Now, I'm, I'm very happy with watching Longanini's style. First time I've seen George fight, yes. actually, and uh, I'm very happy to see his style. He's been well schooled, yeah. and then his brother would have a lot to do with it. His brother at Ringside looking a bit worried at the moment, as you would. With a relative in the ring. Up against the big man like this who can be dangerous. Always uh, tough, always a tough time, as you said, when you have a relative in the ring. Oh, very much so. But Stan the man, he's been there, he's climbed the top of the mountain. He knows what it's all about. He knows what the iron line's going through at the moment. Oh, yeah. And that keeps the big man at bay with a, that left to front kick. Some useful kick. combinations there by the iron lion. George tried to attack me for you. Didn't get enough room though by the time he got in there. Terra to Tuaru had him wrapped up in a headlock and he couldn't get his knees up. Yeah. Uh, Tuaru to Teru. It's going to be difficult here. Longanides really has to concentrate on getting a points victory, I'd say. And that's by working away with the knees, just doing, be consistent. Mm. Uh, get some punches in, but get the knees working into the body, into the frame. Uh, be careful with the leg kicks, of course, because uh, uh, you catch in the wrong spot, you can break a toe. Oh, no doubt about it. You've got to be flush with that, with a uh, with a foot kick or a slapping uh, front foot kick to the uh, fibula, the tibula, or the back calf. This round's uh, become more of a wrestling match, uh, Stephen. Yes, it's becoming uh, that type of affair. The boys also have uh, used up a bit of petrol gas tickets at this point. And uh, you can see uh, Terry Tudoru has uh, probably gone into second gear a bit now. Nice left there by Tudoru. <laughs> Must be very awkward for Longinides to fight a man of this size. Well, it is, and also... Oh, he tried a spinning back kick, but seemed to pull out of that. A very awkward opponent to uh, uh, Tudor. Extremely awkward. Very awkward with the physique. Uh, low, low oh, second. that was a big, big right kick there from Tudor. Across the back. That really, uh, you would hope that fight would have had another round or two in it. Because both those boys were just starting to get into their moves, get into their legs, and all of their positions. And uh, through the last three by three, it uh, doesn't really tell us the uh, complete story. Ab Troy. No, it doesn't. But a lot of admiration for Terry Tudoru taking this, as I said, on very short notice, Stephen. Yeah, and uh, upheld himself very nicely, too, I might uh, Absolutely. Did a great job in the finishing. Take your hats off to both, both kickboxers. Both lads have a lot of skill, a lot of physical strength. Might go to Howard Lee to get the physical decision, I think, Troy.
Both fighters come to the center ring. Uh, how about a big round of applause there for Terry Tuturu from uh, New Zealand, uh, from Auckland, uh, and the Iron Lion, George Longanitas. Once again, our three judges all saw it by unanimous decision. 30 points to 27. All for the winner, the Iron Lion, George Longanitas. <laughs> Selena. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, babe. Uh. Hey, babe. We'll talk to George. Thank you, Leah. Thank you, Sam. Just want to talk to Terry. Terry, uh, last time we saw you was against James Grimmer. I just want to ask you a very personal question. What would you have for breakfast tomorrow on an average day, Terry? I don't know, KFC, I think. I you don't have breakfast? <laughs> KFC, I think. What, what would you have? KFC or something? A, a C? Yeah. KFC. KFC chicken for brekkie. That's what you told me last time. Give Terry what a good sport he is. Terry Titanic Tuturu. Yep. Yeah, George. Okay, George, that photograph with all your team there, Team Longinitas, Team Tatoris. Okay, Selena and Peter Maniata stepping in. George, come across. Selena Hargraves on behalf of Boxing Fit to present you with the... Come across the centre ring, George. Don't stand in the corner, so to speak. Show your magnificent trophy. <laughs> George... Just like Stan, you're a great communicator. I'll hold that, turn towards the camera and thank a lot of people. First of all, I want to thank my Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ. I give all the glory to him. I don't want none of it. Second, I want to thank Terry. Ma uh, Maverick pulled out very late notice and uh, Terry was the only guy willing to accept, uh, you know, uh, come and fight me with such limited preparation. So, Terry, I appreciate you coming out, man. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be fighting here tonight. Simple as that. So, thank you, Terry. I want to thank my promoter, Peter Manianas. This is our first show together, and hopefully it won't be our last. I will only fight under Peter Manianas. We've got something going now, and hopefully we can go on to bigger and better things. I want to thank my team, Jimmy T, Nicky T, my best mate, Chris, Fab, my main sponsor, Definition Fitness Center, up in East Doncaster. George Mariolas, very special thank you to uh, Joe Mansour. I love you, man. Also, um, all my other sponsors, Black and Blue, Gary and Ellie Minos. They've been with Team Longanides for you know, nearly two decades now. So thanks very much for all your support. I'd also like to thank all my other major sp sponsors. Uh, Tony Lutu from Hair House Warehouse. I want to thank uh, Gary Tsavakos from uh, High Talk Performance. Uh, Alex Trickolis from Trickolis Consulting. Johnny Kokonos, Kokonos Labels. Uh, who else we got here? Uh, Rapture Hair, design from uh, Vinny, Vinny DeFazio. Uh, I think we've got it all, right? I want to thank my church, Crossway Baptist, up in uh, Burwood East, and in particular, uh, uh, Glenn Arnott, and everyone there for all their prayers. My family, who I love very much showing great support and love all the time and also my lovely wife Desi for uh, all her love and support and all her food that she prepares for me that makes me the way I look today and making me strong for every fight and every training session I love you and everyone out here to support not only just me everyone all the fighters tonight if it wasn't for you guys coming to support and paying your way to come and watch us fight we wouldn't be here so thank you and hopefully you can come out to our bigger show next uh, I think maybe in February at the Docklands, we're going to take it bigger and bigger and hopefully we improve and uh, obviously the quality of the fights gets better as well. So I hope to see you then. Thank you very much. A great Christian speech from a great sportsman. Okay. Thank you, George, for that 
marvelous uh, address to the audience. Thank you, everybody. And the buzzsaw, Bruce Glozier. Would you welcome to center ring uh, Amanda McKay? Would you welcome to center ring the chairman of the Professional Boxing and Combat Sports Board, Bernie Barber? Bruce Glozier coming on down to the blue corner, proudly representing uh, New Zealand. Please up standing for a solemn moment to be followed by the Australian National Anthem. Could I have absolute silence in respect, ladies and gentlemen, of a lost boxing brother. Bernie Barmer, come across and join me in centre ring. Bernie, could I have absolute quiet, please, in respect of one of our legendary boxers and world championship referees and judges. Ladies and gentlemen, two weeks ago, Bernie Barmer, Chairman Bernard Barmer, Chairman of the Professional Boxing Combat Sports Board rang to tell me one of our great fighting sons, John Wheeler. Edward John Wheeler was critically ill in Alfred Hospital. John Wheeler had 64 professional fights. He was Victorian featherweight champion. He fought some of the great fighters of Australia and around the world. At the Collingwood Town Hall where Peter Maniatis has promoted successfully, he beat Sergio Milan. He fought Barry Hatcher, Trevor King, Russell Sands Sr. Bluey Wilkins, Brian Young recited many of those things at his eulogy and funeral this Wednesday in South Melbourne, a wonderful gathering and a celebration of John's life. Bernie, before we ask for the 10 gongs from Timekeeper Damien Membry, tell the folks here what you recently presented on behalf of the Professional Boxing and Combat Sports Board to the late John Wheeler. Thanks, Howard. Annually, uh, we have an award called the Ron Casey Award in honour of Ron Casey, who was the uh, chairman of the board for some 10 years, he himself dying in the year 2000. So we created this award for services to boxing and we had the board had decided that uh, John was to be the recipient this year and we normally award it at our final meeting of the year, but uh, unfortunately Johnny... Uh, won't be at that uh, meeting so we brought the award forward and uh, presented it to him in hospital um, and uh, his family attended and it was a, a very joyous occasion but uh, the boxing family is a close family and we'll dearly miss uh, John he was always bright happy he was a thorough gentleman and uh, very easy to get on with and very easy to work with thank you Bernie 75 years young we say may God rest his soul <laughs> ladies and gentlemen in boxing, kickboxing, we don't ask you to stand for a minute's silence. We say it's a knockout. It's a 10 count. Damien Membry will toll the bell 10 times in memory of John Wheeler. Thank you. Absolute quiet, please.
Thank you, Bernard. Okay, please remain standing for the lovely Amanda McKay, who will sing the Australian National Anthem. Amanda, give her a warm welcome to Centre Ring. She's uh, been a wonderful entertainer for us previously. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming tonight. I hope I don't disappoint you. When you're ready. Australians, oh, let us rejoice, for we are young and free, with golden soil and wealth for toil. gifts of beauty rich and rare in history's page let every stage advance Australia fair in joyful strains then let us sing advance Australia The lovely Amanda McKay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to Centering for our main event, Peter Maniatis, show 25, with a great story in this week's Werribee Banner, written by Stephen J. Mill about tonight's big action here in Centering. Your timekeeper to the bell is Damien Membry. Your ringside physician is Peter Lewis. Bernie Barmer, representing the professional boxing and combat sports board. Your referee in charge of the action, WBF World Championship referee judge Chris Anderson. Judges at ringside, Anika Williams. Peter Flaherty and Ignatius Miscellanus. Here we go, eight rounds of boxing for the OBA South Pacific Light Heavyweight championship it's main event time at Malvern <laughs> introducing first in the blue corner from Invercargill New Zealand now he works at Sky City Casino Auckland New Zealand he's had 11 professional fights three wins two draws he fought in China last year ladies and gentlemen at 77.10 kilograms welcome back to Australia wearing black trunks with a touch of white they call him the buzzsaw challenger New Zealand's Bruce Glozier Glozier and across the ring in the red corner part of Tarnate's team of destruction Dave Hegarty, Andrew Woodall, with manager Peter Maniatis in the corner. At 79 kilograms, he's aiming for his second championship belt to replicate his Victorian Super Middleweight Championship. Ten professional fights, eight wins, five big wins, coming by way of knockout from Williamstown via Hoppers Crossing. They call him Two Guns, Johnny Walker. Walker. Chris Anderson to give referees instructions. Chris, face this away. Yep, just waiting for our ringside physician, Dr. Peter Lewis, to return to ringside. Chris Anderson to give referees instructions. Well, Troy, this is going to be a... Uh, century late team from the on board tonight. And here, this, this is going to be an enormous fight, uh, Troy. This is the fight everybody's been waiting for, Stephen. The OBA South Pacific Light Heavyweight title. Main event. Johnny Walker looking to be in pristine physical condition. Been doing a lot of training. He sparred recently with Adrian Bellin in a gymnasium workout of about six or seven rounds. Those two boys showed some sparkling skills. Walker and comes Johnny out. Walker, I think, has improved somewhat uh, in the last uh, few months from a training point of view, Peter. Johnny's learning every fight. This is his 11th pro fight. It's third title fight, so... Uh I'm sure he's going to be trying to be relaxed and, and put his best he's, foot uh, forward. He's been accelerated through the ranks, Peter, hasn't he? He has. Look, he, he's perfect for the pros. He's been a, a touch unlucky. 
with his weight and stuff at super middle, but at light heavy, you'll see a different, stronger boy. He's been at boot camp up in the uh, Queensland area, so he's all ready to go. Now, that would have helped him knowing uh, that would have been tough training. No doubt about that. And he looks tough and hard, Johnny. This is, I think, physically the best I've seen him, I reckon. And uh, at the moment, the boys are tangling up. Glozier. You uh, saw a little bit about sparring Adrian Ballin in an exhibition. Tell us a bit more about that, Steve. Yeah, well, I thought both boys showed a lot of skill in that uh, exhibition uh, training scenario. And uh, Walker took it up to Adrian Ballin and uh, he, uh, he uh, exemplified himself very well in that uh, situation. Uh, Peter, I was most impressed with him, and he stuck with Ballin all the way. And both boys fought a great little exhibition. And here we are. Oh, here. working hard, Walker! As I was talking, he caught him. Hand. He caught him with a massive right hand. You can't sit there like that at Walker Light Heavy. Sim Glosier, face forward onto the canvas, struck him around the uh, just behind the ear hole, Peter and Troy. A tremendous and punch. An enormous punch, oh, Troy. He's back into it, Walker. He's, he's going for the kill. You can Trying see to finish Walker. How hard he's punching, Johnny Walker, Peter. At light heavy, I don't think there's a man that could keep up with him his type of punching power. No, oh, massive right hand that was. There he goes the again. Ball. Now he's stalking. Oh, he's just in a oh. lot of trouble. His corner's telling him to move, but he can't That's get away over. from Johnny Walker. Oh. As he clubs into the canvas, I think it's all over. It is. And it is over. Oh. You don't mind. <laughs> what a sensational well done, display. Well Johnny Walker. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Johnny Walker is back in business. Oh, he's right back in business now. That was beautifully done. Uh, Johnny Walker here. Had all the big guns blazing tonight. Two guns, Troy. Oh, he meant business. He, uh... Opposed to his fight with Sean Connell, he just come out and there was, it was never going to lose this bout. Not at all, Troy, and in fact, he would have been thinking about Connell in the back of his mind, how that ever happened at the time it did and how he had to avenge that. So, oh, he's had a burning desire since that uh, Connell loss to get back on track, well, look, and I'm, he certainly has tonight, Stephen. You're right about that, and I noticed him in that um, exhibition or... Uh, training day that he had with Bellin that uh, I was impressed with the way he took the whole situation up to Bellin and Bellin's an enormous puncher cruiserweight level and uh, yeah. Walker was right on top of him a disgruntled blows here Stephen well he uh, he wasn't listening to his corner Troy he should have been moving around staying away from Walker until the bell went ignored the instructions of his corner he, hit he him stood with in front of Walker and Walker kept massive right hands plowing away at him he's accepted the call Johnny Walker comes over commentary area well done John as we uh, congratulate him, uh, he looks stronger. He looks like uh, he's uh, put a little muscle on the physique. One minute, 59 seconds of the first round. Referee Chris Anderson said, enough is enough. One minute, 59 seconds. Your winner and new OBA, Cruiserweight Pacific Champion, John Two Guns Walker. Walker. The championship belt, South Pacific. Championship belt goes around the waist of John Walker. Gone but not forgotten. Gary Huxtable, I think uh, tonight, John Walker remembering his good friend Gary Huxtable who died recently. We're going to talk to John and he's going to thank you for being here. Peter, great crowd in uh, and a big win there for Johnny Walker, Pete. Fantastic win for Johnny, a light heavyweight. I don't think there's many light heavyweights that can go with John. As a matter of fact, we're going to put a challenge out to Heath Stenton of the Australian Light Heavyweight title. There we are, Heath Stenton. Tony Solder, Heath Stenton. There's a challenge in the new year. John Two Guns Walker now, Victorian Super Middleweight and OVA Pacific Light Heavyweight Champion. See you, Nick. Three cheers for John Hibbep. Hibbep.
Hey, Bip! John, come across. John, after the disappointment of the Sean Connell fight, you stayed at light heavyweight and came out smoking and was all over in two minutes. Well done. Yeah, thanks, Howard. Uh, yeah, light heavyweight's definitely the way for me. I mean, super middleweight, I was struggling a bit. But um, I just want to thank all my supporters. They come to all my fights. And uh, this fight was dedicated to my uncle, Gary Horsborough. He was always at my fights, big supporter of mine. This, this, this bout's for him. And yeah, I'd just like, like to thank everyone else that come out to support the boxing. I'd like to thank Peter Matiatis for giving me the opportunity to fight for another title. And my corner, Dave Hegarty, Andrew Woodhall, Steve and all the boys that help us. Boxing fit for the sponsorships, for the fight night and, all the, and everyone else. Pete, winding up another great night at the office. And I'd like to thank everyone for turning up and supporting the boxers. We really appreciate it. Johnny showed explosive punch and power. There were some great fights on there, some great KOs, so I hope the fighters and the, the audience were satisfied, and I'm sure Johnny's going to do us all proud and, and go a long way. Good on you, Pete. Look forward to Peter Maniatis coming back in 2007. He's talking about the Docklands. That could be something very bold. Howard Lee, on behalf of our commentary team, Stephen J. Peake, Stephen uh, J. Milne, Troy J. Santac, Robbie J. Flower. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. All the best for Santa Claus. Keep punching. Protect yourself at all times, both physically and emotionally. Reach for the stars. May God bless. Peace on earth. Keep punching. See you soon. Good night, night from Melbourne City Hall. We're in our main event. John Walker blew away New Zealand's Bruce Glozier. In round one to capture the OBA.